There are some Man City fans out there who have never seen their side lose to Newcastle United in the Premier League. The Magpies haven't beaten them for 21 league games. It's a shambolic record. So let's take a look at the Man City side that last lost to them by a scoreline of 1-0 with Michael Owen netting on his home debut in September 2005. David James. It took Pep Guardiola about 5 minutes to realise that Joe Hart was only good enough for shampoo commercials. Can you imagine what his thought process would have been if the likes of David James was still a Man City? I think it highlights just how few top class goalkeepers the country produced that he was getting dragged to a World Cup at 40 years of age. Anyway, he spent three years at Eastlands, replacing David Seaman in 2003, before moving to Portsmouth in 2006. He then took in spells of Bristol City, Bournemouth, IBV in Iceland, Kerala Blasters in India, and recently filed for bankruptcy. Nedim Anawoa. Big things were tipped for Nedim Anawoa when he broke through at Man City as a teenager. Sadly, he soon fell victim to the club's newfound wealth, getting lost behind the heap of top class talent and Colo Torre that was drafted through the door. He's now 31 years old and in his sixth season at QPR, and don't even ask whatever happened to that international career. Sylvain Distan. Former Newcastle defender Sylvain Distan was actually a fine player for Man City and to be honest they probably let him go a season or two too early. Signed in 2002 from PSG the Frenchman made over 200 appearances before following James to Portsmouth in 2007 somehow winning the FA Cup and then escaping to Everton once he smelt everything turning to sh**. He bowed out his career Premier League footballer with Bournemouth last season. You know it's probably time to hang up the boots when you're older than the manager. Richard Dunn. Don't let the fact he scored about 10 own goals a season fool you. Richard Dunn was a terrific player for Man City as evidenced by him winning the Player of the Year award four years running. However, despite the man possessing an unquestionable thirst for own goals and Russians, he was unceremoniously dumped in 2009, a year after the money came along. Apparently, the club needed the cash when they sold him to Aston Villa for £5 million. Yeah, good lad, I'd say Scheichmann sort of tips that much at the gas station. He finished up his career at QPR before moving to Monaco for some reason. Ben Thatcher. You might remember Ben Thatcher as that bang average left back who carved out one of the most unremarkable careers in living memory. You might also remember he nearly ended up in jail for almost killing a man on a football pitch. Good God, Ben, what was he thinking when he drove his elbow into Pedro Mendes in August 2006, driving through him like a bulldozer. Thankfully, Mendes made a full recovery, but that incident definitely left a stain on Thatcher's career, with many a football fan screaming for him to be thrown behind bars. He wasn't, but he was sold to Charlton, which is probably just as bad. He retired in 2010 at Ipswich Town. Sun Ji Hai. Oh, Sun Ji Hai played? Uh, no wonder they lost. I would love to see Sun Ji Hai in his prime in this current Manchester City team, and see how much of a fish out of water he would look. I'm guessing the City players would just purposely avoid passing it to him. To give context as to what sort of state City were in before Scheichmann saw a port in his bag of gold. The Chinese defender had been there for six years before signing for Sheffield United in 2008. He returned to China 12 league games later before retiring last year and currently funds the Beijing Haiku Technology Company. Joey Barton. Joey Barton was carving out a name for himself both on and off the pitch. He'd already stubbed a cigar into his teammate's eye the previous Christmas, but he'd yet to assault half the city team. That would be seven years later, although he'd make a good fist of one of them in 2007 while he was still at the club. Barton would go on to sign for Newcastle, a club who were experts at employing teammates who fought each other claiming he felt that Magpies were a better bet to start picking up silverware before the club were paying the wages of Georgia Samaras. Bit awkward how that one turned out. Claudio Reyna. Capped 112 times by the United States, Claudio Reyna's international career couldn't have ended a worse way. Slipping, injuring himself and gifting the ball to Ghana's Hamanu Draman, who fired home to knock the US out of the 2006 World Cup. On the club front, Reyna returned to America to sign for the New York Red Bulls in 2007 and retired the following year. Kiki Musampa. Another Eastlands fan favourite. Another one who'd be used as nothing more than someone to put out the bibs in training these days. Kiki Musampa spent two seasons on loan in England from Atletico Madrid. He finished his career in 2009 at the age of 32 with Dutch club Villain 2. Antoine Sibierski. Another lad who actually did end up at St. James's Park himself, but in his case you'd be hard pushed to find a more underwhelming signing at Newcastle. And they've signed Shevki Kuchi. On transfer deadline day in 2006 the club were linked with all sorts of players such as Nicholas Anelka and even David Villa. And then the club drafted in the unprolific Antoine Sibierski with two hours remaining. The man who'd just been released by Man City. A Man City team with Darius Vassell and a pension Andy Cole up front. But to be fair, Sibierski proved himself and became a fan favourite up north, netting some important goals. He moved to Wigan in 2007 before retiring in 2009. He briefly became a football agent and is now the sporting director of RC Lons. Darius Vassell. Gabriel Jesus, Sergio Aguero. Yep, City fans, you once had Darius Vassell leading the line for you. The man who'd seen England's Euro 2004 hopes go up in absolute flames was used to disappointing his own fans and so he continued that trend with 17 league goals in 103 games. Horrific. He was sold to Turkish club Ankaraku, where his unveiled was treated as the second coming of Christ himself before retiring at Svenjorn and Eriksson's Leicester City who should have known by now not to trust him with a pair of football boots. He left Leicester in 2012 then scanned the market looking for a new club. It took him four years to realise nobody wanted him. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.